so good evening to all uh, myself saitali i am the host for the session dp203 data engineering on microsoft azure so we will start with the introduction about today's session before that let's have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor synergetics synergetics is india's one of a kind corporate learning solution company which helps any industry to get their relevant technologies solution and helps to be on the top of the competition we are not only restricted to the group trainings but also our microsoft certification trainings helps every individual profession to succeed in the competitive world here are some of the master solution offered by synergetics onboarding solution reskilling solution certification certification plus add on cloud adoption architecting practice playbook latest technology training emerging technology training now today's session is organized by atc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our atc community is open to all the people who are interested in microsoft cloud technologies you just need to follow meetup groups which are emerging technology community for all azure tech community pune for pune kars azure tech community nagpur for nagpur kars azure tech community gujarat for gujarati tech and ai on microsoft platform community for ai groups you just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our communities so you will be updated about our events meetups webinars and workshop now small code of conduct which you all need to follow please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording if you need the recording then you just have to subscribe to our youtube channel we will be sharing the youtube channel link in the chat box later agenda for the session the session will cover work, working with the batches and real time analytical solution using azure data platform technologies and more now special announcement to do each attendee will be provided with the moc microsoft official curriculum on the email ids for free for your understanding moc is an important study material for your exam preparation we will be sharing the moc activation form in the chat box that you have to fill out to receive the moc for dp203 today speaker for this session is mr chandrashekar deshpande chandrashekar sir is working in corporate industry for more than 30 years his core experience is in data related technologies he is a microsoft certified trainer and delivered the session on highly demanded technologies like big data analytics machine learning azure and hadoop next slide please yeah exam voucher ones yeah also we, we we will be providing the exam voucher for dp203 at 3100 discount in trade if you want you can connect us on info at the rate synergetic hyphen india.com now you can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skill with microsoft various certification you can enroll for any of this training program with synergetics where you will be experiencing live interactive session with best industry mcts trust us and we will be delivering the best next webinar will be on hyper automation which is on 30th june to our session it will be the link for the registration will be provided in the chat box later next slide then we have badges for the dp203 dates are mentioned in the screen the training includes moc exam voucher as well pass assessment post training mentor mentoring session at just rupees 22500 plus gst for more information related to the training you can connect us at info at synergetics-india.com the email id will be provided in the chat box later 
next slide you can follow us on our social media platform for getting updated related to the upcoming sessions and webinars the links will be provided in the chat box now i'd like to hand over the mic to chandra sir so you can go ahead with the session thanks to all thanks chaitali thanks rupesh thank I you sir yeah. I welcome all of you for this session on DP203 certification. It's a uh, uh, three and a half hour session wherein we will uh, try to revise the contents again and we will try to, you know, uh, uh, recall the steps uh, of uh, hands on lab so that, uh, you know, uh, different questions on hands on lab, uh, lab, you should be in position to answer. I have around uh, 30 questions with me, which we will go through. Uh, understand what type of questions are asked in the examination and what are all the best ways to answer them. TP203. Let me share my screen. I will, first of all, we will understand uh, what type of examination it is. Uh, so let us first of all understand uh, the way of the examination. Uh, what are the minimum marks? What are the you know uh, best practices to go for the examination? Thereafter, we will uh, go through uh, all the modules of the curriculum, and thereafter we will go through uh, questions uh, on the topic. Sharing my screen. First of all, let me check with everybody. Am I audible there? Yes, yes. Sir, we can guess. Yes. And uh, I have shared the screen. Let me know the screen is reaching to you. Yes, yes, it is visible. Yeah. So overall curriculum uh, has been divided into uh, this is module one, module two, module three, module four. So overall curriculum curriculum has been divided into four modules. Out of these, just observe the weightage given on the module one, design and implement data storage. This is the most important module, carrying highest weightage here, and uh, 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 you know uh, questions are also not that, that much difficult. So. If you understand the things conceptually, appearing uh, for the uh, questions, uh, examination is not difficult. Examination is completely, I repeat, completely MCQ based. There is no practical examination. There is no descriptive uh, questions asked in the examination. There will be around 55 to 70 questions, 55 to 65 questions, okay, and all are MCQ based. Module two also carries around 25 to 30 uh, percent of weightage. So both these modules, you know, uh, carry around uh, you know 70 percent of weightage in the examination. 70 percent of weightage. But remember, 70 percent of weightage is not sufficient to successfully pass the examination. That should not be your target. Your target should be at least 90 percent of uh, weightage. Module three. 10 to 15 percent and module 4, 10 to 15 percent. So at least three modules you must do and you should have a fair idea about the fourth module. OK, so we will go through these modules one by one. How you will prepare for the examination? All are MCQ questions with a single or multiple choice. As far as multiple choice questions are concerned, uh, uh, you know, around uh, uh, 60 to 70 percent questions are multi choice. 60 to 70 percent questions are multi choice. There are around uh, 20 to 30 questions uh, uh, which are of the single choice. In front of the question, when there are radio buttons in front of the answer, when there are radio buttons, it is a single choice question. And if it is checkbox, it is multi choice question. Also, whenever you read the description of the question, there is clearly mentioned whether the question is of the single choice or a multi choice. So it is a bit obvious that multi choice questions do carry uh, higher weightage. Okay, total weightage 
uh, is uh, passing score is 700 out of 1000. 700 uh, is the minimum passing uh, score. No negative marking. So I will recommend you to try each and every question. There are two, three questions. For which. In case if your any one multi choice goes wrong, whole question goes wrong. But other multi choice questions are like in case if they are asking you to tick three uh, checkboxes and if you are two checkboxes are correct, you will definitely get uh, weightage on the correct uh, answers. OK, a wrong answer anyway is not uh, you know, due for giving you a score, but. Correct answers definitely uh, you can earn weightage over there, but there are two to three questions in overall question set for which you have to answer very carefully. Even if one answer goes wrong, whole answer goes wrong. So there I will not uh, recommend you to uh, attempt that question if you don't know it or if you know it partly. If you don't know it and you appear for it, no loss at all. But if you know it and one answer you are goes wrong, OK, other answers which you were perhaps aware, those will also go wrong. So those questions such are two to three questions. Those you have to appear carefully. Total passing score is 700 out of 1000. Total exam duration is 210 minutes, including including 15 minutes. You have to join early 15 minutes. Post the exam, post examination, you have to stay there. You have to wait there. So actual examination is of three hours. It is of 180 minutes. You have to join 15 minutes early. OK, it is essential if you are going to the pro matrix center, those 15 minutes what they need to make all the provisions for you. Uh, you your proper login and other things uh, are taken care there. If you are appearing from the home, that is also an option available. There, your appropriate authentication may need 15 minutes. So don't be in impression that you can join the examination at the time, uh, at, at exact time. No, you can always, uh, it, it is always good if you join it 15 minutes early. There are around 60 to 68 uh, MCQs given to you with an average of three minutes per question. Now here, all 60 to 68 questions are not individual, but half of the questions are individual, individual in the sense you have given the question with a statement, you have to read the statement and then answer. Then another question where again its own statement is given and you have to answer. But rest of the questions around half, uh, 20 to 25 questions, OK, are case study based. There you have to you have given one uh, say statement and on that statement you will be asked five questions. Those five questions uh, to answer those five questions, you have to carefully go through the case, uh, case study statement. So around five to eight questions are asked on it. This is one case study on which five to eight questions are asked. OK, I will. What I can remember is there will be three such case study based questions, three to four such case study based questions. So total questions count uh, goes around uh, 25 uh, to 30. So that will be examination patterns. Uh, uh, important takeaways are all are MCQ type questions. 700 is a passing score. There is no negative marking. Better you attempt every question. OK, and uh, examination overall examination will be of three hours. Examination location can be selected or chosen as a pro matrix center or you can appear for the examination from home also. Uh, nowadays what is happening is the pro matrix centers are uh, um, uh, giving only noon time slot to appear for such examinations if they don't have appropriate seating arrangement. So a schedule of the pro matrix center may not suit to us uh, specifically when uh, in the day uh, daytime we are busy with our office and in the evening these pro matrix centers may not have the time slot available. 
uh, so the best another best option available is of the uh, appearing for the uh, examination from home but now whenever you are selecting uh, your location as home couple of uh, things you have to take care of you must have room completely isolated while examination is going on so this is very important point you cannot have your family members roaming around and there you are giving the examination that is not allowed there will be um, uh, people who are continuously monitoring you through video and continuously listening for you know uh, uh, any audio or sound around you through your laptop audio and in case if they sense any uh, suspicious there they immediately take objection and they immediately they may ask you to turn the laptop around to show them uh, complete uh, you know uh, 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 things around you how far you are keeping your mobile there must not be any other laptop around you so they may ask you to turn around the laptop and show them every corner of the room there they may must not see anybody in the room there and they must see that room has been locked from inside now normally what happens is for selecting uh, the time slot for the uh, uh, say uh, location as a home there uh, 24 hours of time slots are available so whenever your family members go to the bed that time slot also you can select okay and thereby you will get complete uh, tranquility around you uh, to appear for the examination must maintain complete decorum of examination without anybody around no second laptop around mobile phone phone must always be away at arms distance audio and video must be on as a proctor there is one proctor in india and another proctor outside india and they will continuously be monitoring uh, monitoring you they monitor even at the level of your lips movements are also not allowed your eyelids if are looking at different uh, place other than your laptop screen they may take objection okay so you have to be extremely careful here and you have to maintain complete decorum for appearing for the examination laptop must be used for examination must pass all hardware test well before examination so what does it mean is that whenever uh, you are registering yourself for the examination at that time uh, those steps you have to follow where they there is a hyperlink which you have to click what happens when you click on that hyperlink the laptop that you are using for the examination that should be used for at the time of the registration okay and when you click on that hyperlink some software gets the uh, executed in your laptop which checks for whether video is working or not whether audio is properly working or not how much is the internet speed all these things are tested there okay and thereby that software approves your laptop for the ex examination and better you use the same laptop at the time of examination also whenever you uh, they are asking you to uh, join or login examination 15 minutes early at that time also that software gets automatically executed on your machine on your laptop and a final check of your lap laptop hardware happens or is carried out you know before you go for the examination at the time of examination they may provide you one hyperlink okay which you have to click through your mobile device so when you click it through your mobile device okay uh, 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 say some software gets executed and that software asks you for your authentication so maybe pan card or aadhar card photograph you may have to upload immediately there they, it may ask you to click the photographs of the room and uh, upload them immediately so that is a reason why you better join 15 minutes early but these cares are to be taken for appearing for the examination here i am sharing uh, some links uh, to you okay where some documentation has been given okay anyway chaitali already have told you that she will be sharing moc with you 
Okay, so this documentation anyway is a part of that MOC only. So either this documentation or MOC both will work. I would like to check uh, uh, with you how many of you have tried appearing for this examination uh, recently. You can raise your hands in the team's meet, please. Let me know whether everybody is appearing for this examination for the first time. Can I check with uh, uh, Vinay Kali? Yes, I'm preparing for first time. Achha, achha. And also Arun Kumar raised hand, Supra, uh, Suprakash Roy also raised hand, Bhavin, uh, Pratima, Sudhir, Rachi. So shall I assume others? Already have joined, uh, sorry, already have attempted the examination once. OK, fine. OK, fine, I'm lowering all the hands and let us move ahead. Yes, Amar. Here, both links I have shared to you. Yes. OK, now let us come to know uh, actual topic. So first of all, let me take you to uh, what exactly as your Synapse uh, services. What is Synapse, uh, Synapse Analytics? Please note DP203 is a certification where Synapse Analytics Services, study of Synapse, Synapse Analytics Services is a major part of the curriculum. There are two main services being covered here. One is Synapse Analytics and second is uh, Databricks. But in addition to this, you may need uh, uh, you know, knowledge of storage account. Let me just quickly mention these things here. AP203, Synapse Analytics, Synapse Analytics, Databricks. OK, beside this, uh, knowledge of storage account, knowledge of uh, Cosmos DB, data warehouse, or RDB, RD, uh, relational database management system, RDBMS, Okay, Ed, uh, EDF, data factory. Uh, these uh, knowledge of these services will be extremely helpful to you uh, to go for the examination. Okay, so this is uh, all these are Azure services. All these are Azure services. Okay, so let me take a brief overview of uh, a quick comparison among these services. That also will uh, help you. So first of all, let us talk about storage account or storages. So here you will have uh, blob storage, blob storage. This is called as the object storage also, object or uh, object storage also. Every file, every type of file you can preserve here. Every type of file you can store here. So uh, even uh, whatever the image, audio, video file you may want to render on web pages of the web application, you know those files also you can store here. For analysis, uh, analytics, you may want to store uh, data here, whatever with the format it is with, you know that also you can store here. So it is object storage, okay, and it uh, follows flat file namespace, flat file namespace means it. So we know that whenever we are storing the file, there is a name to the file, and then you know it is a path to the file. That path represents 
uh, what is the roots uh, folder, what is the subfolder, what is the sub subfolder, that complete path it mentions. But whenever we talk about flat file namespace, there what happens is folder structure is there, but folder structure also becomes a part of the uh, file name, part of the file name. For example, A is a uh, one folder inside which there is a subfolder B, inside which there is a subfolder C, and there is a file inside it. Okay, so here what we call it as in uh, Windows, A is a superfolder, B is a subfolder, C is a sub subfolder. That's what we assume. But in case of flat file namespace, this whole becomes a file name. So there it shows you A, B, C as a, uh, with a folder icon, but truly speaking, inside the storage, there are no such folders. But that path becomes a part of the file name that is called as a flat namespace. In blob storage, there are three uh, tiers. We call it as storage tiers. Uh, storage tiers, hot, pool, and archive. We take it in the uh, hot, pool, and archive. Hot means basically whenever you want to work with the data, there only better you keep it in the hot. Hot offers you better read write speed. OK, but storage space is costly here. Better, not better read write speed. OK, cost, less cost, less cost for read write speed. It's not a better read write speed, but cost is low for many read and writes. OK, so whenever you want to do frequent read and write, better you go with a hot, but costly. Costly. Or storage space. Storage space. We take it into file. Oh, yes. yes. Let us talk about pool. Okay, so whenever you are uh, processing the data, you keep it in the hot. Okay, but after that, you move it to pool because. Pool I first for read write, but cheaper for storage space. Storage space. So whenever you are not working with it, better you move it to pool. And within a fraction of a minute, you can you know, shuffle your data between hot and pool. Okay, yes. Archive. OK, it is for keeping your data as a backup. OK, uh, for backup process. Uh, sorry, for backing up the data. OK, whenever you need a data quickly, it is not suitable because it takes a long time you know, to bring, uh, so, uh, get your data back into hot or cool. OK, not suitable when you need data quickly. Don't go with it. It takes a long time for you to get the data back into hot or cool. OK, from uh, archive and process of getting data back from archive to hot and cool. That is called as a rehydration. Rehydration. Words. Tear of the data. Uh, from archive to hot or cool. Conversion between hot and cool is very fast, but conversion from archive always takes a long time. And that time may go in couple of hours also, not in minutes, but in hours also. That process is called as a rehydration. Okay, as far as uh, uh, say replication is concerned, okay, here you will have uh, local replication, local, Zone, we call it as a zone uh, redundancy also. Geo, geo replication, and geo read replication. Geo read replication. In local, what it does within a data center, it creates the three copies. Three copies within a data center, so that one copy gets uh, gets corrupted or 
you know becomes unavailable other two copies keep you of uh, giving you uninterrupted service in zone redundancy okay what it does is it uh, creates a copies not only in one data center but in other data centers in the same region now when i say same region so here west india uh, data center is in mumbai in mumbai there is no one data center in west india there are three data centers here. In uh, central India, data centers are in uh, Pune, but there are three data centers. So zone means three copies each within data centers in same region. West India is one region. In, there are three data centers and the total nine copies it has to create. Total nine copies it has to create. A geo means what? Geographically far away, the copies are created. Okay, so local plus zone plus you know, geographically opposite data center. Geographically opposite data center. For some reason, if your complete data center becomes unavailable, complete region becomes unavailable, still you will continue uh, uh, getting the data. Your data will be safe here in geographically opposite data center. Your data will be safe. It may take an hour or so to hour or two to bring the data back for you. OK, but it is not a case that you will lose the data. But waiting for two hours again is uh, difficult for you. That is the nature of your business. Say, then you can go with a geo read. In geo read, you know, whenever your one data center goes down or one region goes down, immediately all the requests for that storage you know, are routed to geographically opposite data centers, and it still keep giving you services uninterrupted. Okay. Interrupted. This is because this center is for geo and read. It, it makes uh, your data readable in case if your original data is not available. This is for taking a kind of a backup. OK, where it will maintain the copy in a remote uh, geographically remote uh, data center. And whenever your data uh, is not accessible in the region, you know, you can or you can replenish your data or rebuild your data uh, in the region you know after your region is up and working so the backup is maintained here okay and it will take uh, one or two or sorry two hours for it to for you uh, the data so this is about the storage there is another storage called as a data lake data lake store data lake store has been said to be uh, infinite storage Finite storage. Okay, it is for very large size of data, big data also. Infinite storage or big data, big data. It offers you better read and write speed also. Better read and write speed. So fast read and write can be done here. OK, but if you compare its overall cost with the storage, you know. Data lake storage is costly. OK, it is. Can store your data into data lake store when you really. Uh, say you, re you really need it. OK, and uh, storage is perhaps are not meeting your requirements. Besides this. OK, this is hierarchical storage. Hierarchical. Hierarchical storage in the sense that uh, there is a directory structure, root directory, sub directory, sub sub directory is exactly like Windows. Okay, so directory structure, it has a directory structure. Directory structure. Okay, so uh, block storage is a flat file name space, but uh, data lake storage is a hierarchy. Blob storage uh, is a cheaper. 
but data lake store you know, is costly. OK, and it offers you better read and write speed. So it is basically for OLTP workload. Basically for OLTP workload. OK, now what is happening is there are two versions, Gen 1 and Gen 2. So Gen 1 uh, has been uh, there in Azure as a separate service. Separate service. OK, but Gen 2 is not there as a separate service. You have to create it by choosing Azure Storage Account as a service within Azure Storage as a service. OK, so whenever you provision Azure Storage, at that time at one place it asks you, do you want hierarchical namespace? So if you check that box, it creates a chain to. If you don't check that box, it creates storage account. So on just one, uh, 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 one single box, you know, it makes the decision whether you want to go with a storage account or a data lake store. OK, is that there are relational storages also? So RDBMS, SQL database, data warehouse, data warehouse. Now this data warehouse has been named as dedicated SQL pool and has been made as a part of Synapse Analytics. Dedicated SQL pool, and that has been made as a part of the Synapse Analytics. Okay, so we will see how does it work. Okay, but both, sorry, uh, SQL database basically is for OLTP workload. OLTP workload. Sorry, I have mentioned here wrongly. It's not OLTP, it's OLAP workload. Data Lake Store basically is for OLAP workload. But databases are for OLTP workload and dedicated SQL pool is for OLAP workload. This is for OLAP workload. Besides this, there is something called as a Cosmos DB. Cosmos database. Cosmos DB basically is a no SQL database. No SQL database. OK, and it offers Turnkey distribution, multi-model, multi-data model with turnkey distribution. Multi-data model means here you can create a Cosmos DB account uh, as a document database or columnar database or graph database. So one service offers you different types of databases. Okay, with turnkey distribution. Now turnkey distribution means here, while creating Cosmos DB instances, you can choose in which region you want to create instances. So you may select uh, one instance to be in India, another in US, third one is in UK, and fourth one is in uh, Australia. Whenever you do any change in uh, instance uh, in India, that change is immediately replicated in US, UK, and Australia. It is synchronously replicated so that at no point of time the customer there in US or in UK or in Australia will get any obsolete data. To provide them up to date data, you know, uh, synchronous updation can be done. That is called as a turnkey distribution. So that is all about uh, storages. Okay, what are all computes? Let us see now. Computes. So uh, computes, huh, yes, for analytics processing. OK, so uh, here you will see that there is a Spark compute available in Synapse Analytics. Synapse Analytics. It has a Spark engine. Spark engine. OK, then comes the Databricks also. Databricks. Also has a Spark engine. Then comes HD Insight. HD Insight. It also has a Spark engine. Spark engine. HD Insight can can uh, can have you know Spark engine, Storm engine, okay, Kafka, uh, HBase, Hive. Lots of services are available uh, under. Uh, Hadoop platform that is offered by HD Insight. So HD Insight is actually Hadoop implementation 
and on that Hadoop uh, cluster, you know, uh, you can uh, have these different services of Spark, Storm, Kafka, HBase, or Hive like engines. Okay, so all types of analytics can be done here using HD Insight also. The uh, advantage of going with the Spark is of the turbo speed. Hadoop uh, runs slow and Spark on Hadoop runs very fast. So Spark basically can run on Hadoop. So from Hadoop, Spark leverages uh, benefits of distributed processing. But Spark, unlike Hadoop, works very less with a hard disk. It, it tries to do its job while keeping data within, within the RAM only, random access memory only. And that's the reason why Spark is very fast. And that's why Spark engine is being used inside all these services. So here we will be looking at Synapse Analytics. And now it, let me quickly go through a couple of sli slides, okay, to bring uh, to uh, uh, to understand some of the basic concepts. Data Lake Store Gen 2. Okay, here uh, its features are mentioned. Handling hundreds of gigabytes of throughput. Supports HDFS wrapper for Azure Databricks. So HDFS API uh, is made available on uh, Data Lake so that uh, you know Databricks, HD Insight, uh, um, uh, your Hadoop can access the data from Data Lake using HDFS API. Okay, so Synapse Analytics to access same data set offers access control list and POSIX security. High performance because of hierarchical storage. High performance is also because of better read and write speed. So for big data and for analytics processing, uh, data lake store is really good. Inherit Azure Blob Storage replication model with LRS, local replication storage and uh, geo replication storage options. Okay, that's what I told you here that whenever you are creating a data lake store within storage, Azure storage, and these replications uh, uh, strategies of uh, uh, Azure storage okay, uh, is available for data lake. In Gen 1, those facilities were not extensively available, but in Gen 2, okay, those are extensively available. Yes. Hierarchical storage also I already have discussed. I discussed uh, with you hot, cold, archive, local zone, geo, and uh, read access geo. Those also I have discussed. Databricks. Databricks incorporation has developed Spark engine. Okay, and then they introduced one cloud platform. Okay, on which uh, your analytical and big data processing workload can be quickly done. That is called as a Databricks. So Databricks incorporation has introduced this cloud platform later. Azure went into collaboration with them, and both of them have introduced uh, say service on Azure as Azure Databricks. Azure Databricks has been introduced uh, on Azure as a first class citizen. Okay, but you know uh, Databricks Incorporation is managing that service. So really powerful platform available and is one of the most uh, popular platform as on today in the world. OK, so Azure Databricks, Apache Spark based analytics platform. You can do here analytics. OK, you have, you know, uh, comprehensive Spark library support. Uh, here you can do development in four different languages, five different languages. In the same Databricks, OK, you can write the code in Java, Python, Scala, R and Q, uh, sorry, SQL. So all these languages are supported. And Databricks has gone up to the extent that within one application, you can have some code written in Python, other code written in Java in same application. So different parts of the application, you can get developed from, di from different teams. That is also possible in Azure Databricks. Enterprise level security, Integration with other cloud services, all you know, uh, enterprise level uh, services are available 
in Azure Databricks. Spark Engine is extremely fast there. As Spark Engine tries to do most of its operations in memory, so it is extremely fast. There are different optimizers also. So there is a photon ash optimizer, there is a catalyst optimizer, okay, which further uh, enhances performance of the Spark Engine and your uh, latency of getting a response is very low. Spark ML is one library that they are providing and you know, uh, extensive ML support is also available there. Graph processing API is there, stream processing API is there, so different APIs are also there to do different operations. So the point to be noted uh, here is it supports multiling. It has a multilingual support. That is one thing. And another important point would like to bring to your notice. You can do analytics here. You can do ATL work here. Extract, transform and load. You can do machine learning here. You can do deep learning here. OK, so one tool you can do batch processing of your historical data. You can do stream processing of your real time data. And in some application, if you want to do both these things at the same time in the same pipeline, that is also possible. So in the same pipeline, that processing and stream processing also can be done. So looking at all these, this uh, tool seems to be really versatile. OK, and one stop solution for all problems. You can think of it. OK, one solution for all problems So learn one tool and get the different and different types of jobs that you can uh, see with a Spark. And this Spark is available in Synapse Analytics. So it is available there as a service. OK, Databricks versus Spark. So Spark is an engine, compute engine, around which all enterprise level services have been developed. So overall platform, complete platform is called as a Databricks. But Databricks is actually you know, uh, all enterprise level services designed around uh, Spark Engine. Spark Engine is at the heart of this Databricks platform. For stream analytics to in, uh, ingest the data from stream devices uh, to ingest the streaming data, okay, and uh, doing the processing, okay, we have a couple of services. We already have seen stream processing is possible in Databricks also as it offers you stream API. And here you can do stream processing using Python, Java, R language, Scala language. OK, now here we have another solution for stream processing that is called as a stream analytics. In stream analytics, you ingest the data from variety of the uh, real time data source like IoT devices, like uh, logs of the servers, like click on the websites, like mobile devices. You know, uh, so from all these sources, you can accumulate the data. You can do different types of analytics over there. OK, and in order to do this analytics, they are using one special kind of language. We call it the USQL. It's not Python. It's not Java, but it is USQL. USQL is a very simple kind of language, you know, to do the processing. In order to do customization, or if you want extreme level of customization, then you may have to take a support of some language like Python. But otherwise, for doing small and moderate things, uh, USQL is sufficient. Okay, and this USQL, uh, you can do development in USQL, and stream analytics will do your processing. Okay, here it is serverless in the sense that how many CPUs it is using, you don't have to bother. It guarantees you that within these many this much time, it will give you the result. For doing the things uh, within that time, it may have to pull uh, resources very quickly. OK, and it will pull the resources. It will complete your task and it will send the resources back. That is called as a serverless compute. It works. Uh, uh, it works with a serverless compute and your data may be uh, seen on different visuals. OK, so for stream processing, we have a couple of solutions. One of the solution is stream analytics. Another solution is the streaming API. OK, there is third solution also. OK, there is a storm engine on HD Insight. Here I have mentioned already. Storm. 
PhD inside here. Here I have mentioned in star engine. So that also can do real time analytics, but star engine is meant for real time analytics only. OK, uh, batch processing cannot be done, but on Spark batch and batch processing and stream analytics, both are possible. OK, that's why you know, uh, Spark engines are pop popular, more popular. OK, I think I should have started slideshow. <laughs> yes. Live data streaming. From IoT devices or from logs of the server, whenever uh, we receive a data with a high velocity, that data first of all has to go into something called as an event hub. Let me tell you the reason why such a data should not directly go to stream analytics. In case if stream analytics is doing some rigorous work, okay, stream analytics may not be able to <coughs> ingest the data with which with the velocity which, uh, with the velocity with which we are receiving the data so when whenever we are receiving the data with a very high velocity your stream analytics may not be in position to ingest that data and preserve that data with that speed so you have to have something called the event hub in between iot devices and uh, server logs will send their data to events uh, event hubs and event hubs will keep processing will process that data into stream analytics the event hub will ensure that not even a single bit of the data will be lost only because stream analytics cannot do the processing with the speed with which it is receiving the data. There is a need for event hub. Stream analytics will do the processing and will ingest the data to the Power BI. OK, now let us come to Synapse Analytics. In Synapse Analytics, these are different services available. So you have Synapse SQL, you have Synapse Pipeline, Synapse Link, and Synapse Spark. These are four services. Okay, uh, these are four services which have been made available to you through one dashboard that is called as a Synapse Studio. So Synapse Studio is a portal. It is a dashboard on which you get everything uh, through which you can administrate and manage Synapse Analytics. Okay, Synapse SQL, first of all, uh, uh, it represents the data. So Synapse SQL has something called as a data warehouse. There are two services here. One is a data warehouse service and another is a serverless SQL service also. Data warehouse service has a huge storage, huge data with a capacity of any data warehouse you can preserve in data warehouse. Okay, Synapse, sorry, serverless SQL, it doesn't have storage. It has to rely on storage device to hold the data, but it can run a query here. It can execute a query here by fetching the data from storage, work on the query, and accordingly create the results. So there are two types of Synapse SQL, serverless and dedicated uh, data warehouse. This data warehouse is also called as a dedicated SQL pool. We will have a look at it. So those two services are available here. OK, a serverless service uh, does not have storage capacity. It fetches data from other storages, does SQL processing over there to create the uh, results. On the other hand, dedicated SQL pool, it has its own storage capacity from where, as well as from other storages, it can pool the data can hold it within dedicated SQL pool, okay, and create results and reports for you. Synapse pipeline basically is for creating a data pipeline. It is for creating a data pipeline. Data pipeline means pipeline administration. What is the role of the Azure Data Factory? That exactly that role you can see in Synapse pipeline. Exact that role you can see here. Rather, what they have done is in Synapse pipeline. You know, you will see uh, the same web pages what you normally see in case of ADF as your data factory. Same set of web pages you can see uh, in Synapse pipeline. Synapse link. Now this is something I, I will come to Synapse, Synapse link at last. Let me first of all explain you Synapse Spark. 
So Synapse Spark offer you a Spark engine, which can ingest the data from other storages, from dedicated SQL pool, and can apply different Pi Spark operations here, or sorry, different Spark operations here, and process the big data, very big data also in less time. So it is a kind of a compute available uh, in Synapse, okay, where you know, Spark commands can be executed. In order to ingest the data from variety of the data sources, like ingesting data from dedicated SQL pool, ingesting data from other storages, ingesting data from Cosmos DB also, okay, we have one more thing available and that is called as a Synapse link. As of now in Synapse link, uh, only support of Cosmos DB is available, but Synapse Link is offering you something called as a HTAP, Hybrid Transactional and Analytics Workload uh, Processing, not Workload, Processing. HTAP, Hybrid Transactional and Analytics Processing. What HTAP does is HTAP, Hybrid. Transactional analytics. What it does is automatically it converts OLTP data. Automatically transforms OLTP data into uh, analytics format uh, suitable for analytics processing into columnar format table for analytics workload workload okay without a step you might be doing these things explicitly manually but with a step these things are happening automatically so transactional data that you receive from cosmos db gets immediately converted into columnar format okay before it is being submitted to analytics work that is what it tab does otherwise you have to do manually uh, these things here by converting that data from uh, uh, oltp format which is row major format into columnar format uh, which is olp kind of format okay, so that is that uh, that's the feature what they are offering you here in synapse link so looking at Synapse Analytics, you know, it can interact with a relational database management system. It can in, uh, ingest the data from data lake store. Uh, there is something called as a data warehouse pool. There is something called as a serverless pool. So serverless pool is also called as on demand. OK, so all these are the services being shown here. OK, and that data can be used to uh, into Power BI also create the different visuals there. Other features available for uh, enterprise uh, level services or for administration, you will have Azure Synapse Studio there, monitoring there, management and security there, all these things are there. Dedicated SQL pool and serverless SQL pool. The serverless SQL pool is also called uh, as a, uh, uh, say, on-demand SQL pool on demand SQL pool. OK, the moment it realizes that you are in order to run your query, it is taking a longer time. You know, immediately what it does, it pulls the resources. OK, and tries to execute the query, complete query within agreed uh, time. For that purpose, it may have to pool resources. So it is basically for unplanned and ad hoc workloads always available. OK, and while dedicated SQL pool basically is for predictable performance and fast. Other components. I already have told you about uh, Synapse link, hybrid transactional and analytical processing. Synapse pipeline, which works like a data factory. Synapse Spark. OK, which gives you a sense of doing the processing. Uh, using Python language. OK. Uh, now, here is one change. Let me do it right away. OK, Apache Spark 2.5. Now they are supporting. 3.1. 3.1. That is one change that we mentioned. 
recent. It's not recent version, but you know, uh, uh, version with many new features available. This is a Synapse Studio uh, homepage. OK, let me take you to. Uh, uh, Synapse Studio now. So here it is. Before I move to uh, the portal and uh, show you uh, uh, things related with the Synapse, let me check with everybody. Do you have any question in mind? What is OLTP and what is OLTP? Sorry, I did not look at his uh, uh, comments. Uh -huh. OLTP, online transactional processing. Let me mention it here. Online transactional. Processing. OK, so uh, relational database management systems uh, work for it because these are do the transactional where you have to begin the transaction, then you have to do some activities and then either you have to commit it or roll back. OK, so. RDBMS workload is called transactional on Azure. Uh, RDBMS workload like SQL databases. SQL databases. Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB also offers you uh, transactions. So that is called as a OLTP. Here, what happens is your data goes row by row. So whenever you are storing employee data, okay. So the, here it will store um, uh, the data of the employee, first employee as a first. Row. Then it stores data of the second employee as a second row. So that way, so that way multiple rows go there. OK, and this is transactional data. How does it benefit that there is a primary key? There are two things here now. OK, primary key to identify every record uniquely. And there are constraints also. Constraints also. Constraints means it ensures that every data that is going inside this system. OK, first of all, will be validated under a declared constraints. Not null. Uh, primary key. OK, there are around five, six constraints. So. Your OLTP system or your SQL database system ensures that uh, every data that is entering the system should be validated against constraints and then only valid data should go inside. In case of OLAP workload. Online. Analytics. Processing. In case of OLAP workload. You know, data warehouses. Data warehouses is one of the examples. OK, here data does not go row by row, but it picks up 1000 records, finds out all the values of column one. OK, and column one say, and all those values it writes consecutively. So column one, if it's representing employee ID, all employee IDs will come here. All employees of 1000 employees will come there in uh, first row, maybe. Then column two, where all employee names will come. All employee names will come here. Column three, all employee addresses will come here. So that is called as a columnar storage, and OLTP workload is always. You know, uh, work faster on columnar format. OK, so I believe I have answered your question. Let me know, please. Anybody has any other question? Have I made that point clear, Sudhir? Hello, Sudhir. Huh. 
Okay, okay. Anybody has any other question? Please go ahead. Anybody has uh, anybody expect uh, me to re-explain something or put more light on something? Let me know, please. Okay. So I'm moving ahead. Now let us have a look at uh, Synapse Analytics in order to create this service. This service comes under uh, Analytics uh, title. So Analytics head. So compute networking. Let me just find out all. Uh, all. Okay, this is general. So all services. Huh. Here you observe analytics. Under analytics, you will find synapse analytics. Azure synapse. So whenever you are clicking here, it will take you to the uh, page where you can configure uh, its parameters to provision it. Exactly in which resource you want to create it. OK, what is the workspace name, region you want to select? File system name. OK, and here you have to select for data lake store Gen 2. Remember, Synapse Analytics mandatorily uses data lake store gen 2 where it will create a workspace workspace is a storage where your all business artifacts are uh, preserved are stored that is called as a workspace so synapse analytics creates a workspace and that must always go on data lake store gen 2 so whether you want to choose a workspace from uh, whether you want to choose a uh, data lake store gen 2 from existing one or you, do you want to create a new that is what you have to suggest here file name file name is a file name file system name is a container that you will have to create on the uh, data lake store okay so name of the container whenever you click on review plus create you know it will uh, start provisioning synapse analytics and after it provisions the synapse analytics you know, uh, it will uh, just remember. It will take you to uh, this home page. This is overview page of Synapse Analytics. On this page, here you will see new dedicated SQL pool. Here you will see Spark pool. Uh, Data Explorer pool is uh, uh, under preview, so I will not talk much about it. But dedicated SQL pool and Spark pool. So Spark pool basically is a compute for Spark and dedicated SQL pool basically is a data warehouse that we will create. Data warehouse that we will create. Okay, from here also you can see the list of SQL pools or data warehouse databases what you have created or Spark pools that you have created. So from here also you can see that list. From here you can open the studio and whenever you are clicking here, it will take you to Synapse Analytics portal page. <clears throat> I think nobody has answered my question or whether you have any question. Okay, if you don't have a question, please say no. If you want to suggest some improvisation, in the way of my delivery, please let me know. Don't hesitate, but please tell me. Do you need some improvisation in my delivery? Do you have any question on this? Do you are you able to understand? That is also my question. Yes, please go ahead. Can I take few names here? Can I ask uh, uh, Arun Kumar? Amar has answered that. Achha, 
to Prakash and Amar, they have answered that it's OK with them. Let me check with the Prachi. Are you able to understand? In case if you want to suggest something, yes, Pratima has answered. Arun also has answered. Amar, uh, yes, this was OK. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going back. This is the portal. This is the home page for Synapse Analytics. OK, and here you will see one vertical menu. If you expand it from here, you know, these are the options. Data, develop, integrate, monitor and manage. If you go to manage, let us start from bottom. If you go to manage, there you will see from here you can create SQL pool. But one thing you please note, there is one SQL pool which is already existing. Its name is built in. It is serverless and it is online. Interestingly, this SQL pool does not charge you when it is not running any query for you. So this SQL pool is of the zero size compute. But when you try to run some query over there, you know, it automatically pulls some uh, pull in some servers and run, use the, those servers to run your query. Okay, and well within time after it executes your query, you know, it will return those servers back to the serverless pool. So this is basically a serverless pool and it is for ad hoc and on demand execution of the query. But this serverless SQL pool, okay, you will always get a single one and only one instance of it. There is something called as a dedicated SQL pool. Okay, you can create multiple uh, instances of dedicated SQL pool from here. You can create multiple instances of dedicated SQL pool from here. So whenever you are clicking on plus new, OK, it will ask you the details about this pool name, like uh, what is the performance level you want to. So the workload that you want to process, you know, accordingly you will see, you will keep the performance level there. Here it is asking you to, you know, name the dedicated SQL pool, OK, price and other things you can set from here. OK, here there is nothing you can configure, simply configure. Uh, on this blade and click on review plus create within next couple of minutes. It will keep it will create dedicated SQL pool for you. Multiple dedicated SQL pools can be created, but serverless SQL pool is always at least one and at most one. This is created by default. OK, and you cannot create it or you cannot configure it. Hmm. Spark pool can be created from here, so here it creates a compute to run your Spark commands. So Spark pool means it's a uh, you know, compute for Spark commands. External connections can be created from here. Multiple external connections can be created from here. Trigger events can be declared from here. If you want to run one notebook, OK, every day in the evening six o'clock, that trigger you can create from here and create a trigger, then you can associate with that notebook exactly at six o'clock every day it will start running and that notebook commands are automatically executed integration runtime to connect to variety of the data sources those are available here so from here integration runtime even you can connect to your on-premise database also so if you want to pull the data from on-premise sql database so that is also possible in integrated integration runtimes that is also possible Access control basically is for administration, declaring credentials and uh, defining sco scope of the access that you can do from here. So administrative options are available here. OK, Git can be configured here for version uh, uh, tracking. So um, Synapse Analyst can be, you know, uh, linked with a breach account. OK, it can it can be linked with a breach account. OK. And uh, sorry, Git account uh, where you know uh, you can merge your new changes. You can pull the, the code from there. All those things you can do here. That is a version control system. 
everything can be monitored from here. So how your SQL requests are getting executed. OK, you can write a queries on the logs also. For that purpose, you use KQL. KQLs are queries on the logs. OK, so that also you can uh, uh, monitor from here. Functioning of SQL pool, functioning of Spark pool, the task execution, uh, SQL pool, Spark pool, SQL uh, request, all those things can be monitored from here. Integration, this is basically data factory, EDF. OK, how you will uh, create a data pipeline you know, uh, here. Let me just show you a couple of pipelines from here. This is one data pipeline available. This is another data pipeline available. OK, if I click on here. OK, here is uh, so here, this is called as a uh, data flow. So here you can design even data flow also. OK, so that is also available there. <coughs> Develop to create a different types of notebooks here. So this is SQL script notebooks. These are uh, by Spark notebooks. OK, different data flows also uh, can be created from here and connection to other applications are also possible from here. OK, so all your development artifacts are managed under the head develop. OK, D database connectivity and other connectivities can be managed from here. OK, so here are SQL databases. Here are uh, so lake databases. Here are some couple of linked services also. Here are a couple of so connection to blob storage is here. Connection to Cosmos DB is here. Connection to data lake store is here. Uh, other integration data sets are available here. So in case if you are coming from data factory background, you know what exactly data set is. So those things are possible here. <clears throat> okay. Just give me one minute break. I will have a sip of water and come back to it. One minute break only. Mm. Sorry for the break. <clears throat> More slides, and then we will continue with the hands on. <clears throat> okay. So uh, these are different verticals in data integration, ingest and preparation, model and serve, and visualization. There you will see. In ingest and preparation, you can use SQL serverless pool, you can use Synapse Spark, you can use Synapse pipelines. These uh, Synapse services you can use here. Synapse analytics using Spark, you can do while creating a different machine learning models or creating a server serving layer there. OK, and once your data has been aggregated by this layer, that aggregated data you can use to draw some visuals in Power BI. OK, so uh, for designing this end-to-end -end pipeline, 
you know, every service that is needed, you know, is available in Synapse. So Synapse is a unified solution. Synapse is uh, umbrella term where lots of services are available and you don't have to go to any other service. Okay, while designing this end to end pipeline, every service is available there inside Synapse. Just a minute, I will come back to this Delta Lake architecture a little later. I am fast forwarding. Oh. Different Azure data platform technologies we already have, you know, uh, covered here. So difference between storage account and data lake store. OK, uh, and the Cosmos DB and SQL database, you know, uh, different computes like Azure Data Bricks, Azure Synapse Analytics, Azure HD Insight. So we did have, you know, comparison among them. <coughs> For compute, there are three major services. Here you can see HD Insight, Azure Databricks, and Synapse Spark. HD Insight is complete Hadoop platform at the top of which your Spark runs, and uh, your Spark runs at the top of Hadoop cluster. In case of Databricks, a cluster is offered by Databricks only. Okay, and in case of Spark, it is a unified uh, solutions for designing end to end data pipeline. OK, so it here also you get a spark and here for this spark you have to design your own cluster. So you can design your own cluster also. OK, but remember. Databricks is a non Microsoft uh, platform available. Synapse Spark is a plat Microsoft platform available. There is always a question asked. What is the difference or in which scenario should we use Databricks and Synapse Spark? And the answer to it is, you know, they are competing with each other. The solutions to for which you know we can find, uh, sorry, the problems for which we can find a solution using Databricks. You know, for all those problems, we can find a solution using Synapse Spark also. They are competing with each other. Sometimes somebody has upper hand in some area and sometimes others may have upper hand. Databricks is offering you something called as a lake house solution, which is not yet offered by Synapse Spark, but otherwise on all other front they are seen. If you compare the cost, Synapse Spark is always little bit cheaper compared to Databricks because Microsoft wants to you know vouch for uh, Synapse Spark, and they want to, uh, you know, market their product, uh, having upper hands in all areas, including cost. So um, uh, Synapse Studio we have created. Now let us come to Star and Snowflake schema. Okay, again, let me just check with everybody. Any any question on this? I will be waiting for next one minutes. Uh, one minute for. A question. Uh, yes, Samar. You did ask me to take a break. OK, but uh, I think I will take a break uh, by six o'clock. OK, so thereby we will complete around two hours. So we will have 10 minutes break by six o'clock. OK, it's uh, just uh, you know, 25 minutes remaining. So let me continue uh, talking for next 25 minutes. Anybody has any question? Please go ahead. OK, it seems huh, size of the database we can connect. Uh, yes, they do offer you different options here. The capacity of the database can be chosen on two uh, measures. One is called as a DTU and another is a uh, storage size. So DTU talks about how quickly the query to be executed, how many CPUs the query to use, what should be the read and write speed. OK, so that is uh, DTUs. Uh, uh, transactional units. 
ओके मोर आर द ट्रांजेक्शन यूनिट्स मोर इज द ट्रांजेक्शन स्पीड योर सिस्टम विल हैव टू ऑफर एंड इट इंक्रीजेस कॉस्ट आल्सो ओके एंड अनदर इज द स्टोरेज देयर यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट द स्टोरेज विद द कैपेसिटी ऑफ योर वर्कलोड मे बी टू जी बी टेन जी बी टू हंड्रेड जी बी तो अकॉर्डिंगली यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट दी कैपेसिटी देयर ओके सो देर इज वन मोर वे to do the uh, selection of the capacity that is called as a core units core units means there you have to select now how many cpus you will need you have to select what will be the read write speed so sometimes what happens you need less number of cpus but you need more read and write speed so customization is possible through v core we call it as a v core v c o r e okay DTUs do not offer you customization. V core offers you customization. Whenever you select DTUs, if you are selecting 1,000 DTUs, it means per second how many transactions your system should be able to uh, cope up with. Okay, so what will be the hardware it needs for that, for writing 1,000 transactions per unit, and it will make that much hardware ready for. You. So these are two ways to select the uh, capacity. Uh, DTUs and V core, but depending on the workload, you have to select the capacity. Manish, have I answered your question? Azure Synapse and Databricks. In a simple example, for which use case can we can use either of them? Uh, any kind of analytics. Let me take you an example. if you have data to be brought from multiple data sources so here is one data source here is another data source here is one more data source one data source may be rdbms system here it is say database another uh, may be data lake say adl okay third one may be some no sql no sql and you want to pull the data from multiple data sources do the processing Okay, now what kind of processing? So here processing can be, uh, you know, uh, last year cell data has been brought, and on that data you want to do processing like, you know, you want to clean that data. So here you may clean that data, you may apply different transformations on the data. Here you may apply different transformations on the data. You, uh, after that, you may want to apply some aggregation over the data. Okay, so data cleaning, data transformation, data aggregation. These are the steps what you are carrying here. For so, let me mention those the steps. What you will use here, you will use the Spark engine. Okay, cleaning, transformations, aggregations. So there you can use a Spark engine. Okay, now Spark engine is available in Synapse Analytics also, and it is available in Databricks also. Databricks also can ingest the data and can can do uh, the, all these three activities. Synapse Analytics also can ingest the data and can do all these three activities. But in addition, Synapse Analytics offers you data flow. creating a data pipeline that is possible okay in uh, synapse analytics okay such uh, data flow designing is not possible in databricks okay so it is possible in synapse analytics synapse link link connecting to a uh, variety of the data sources and uh, without writing code using GUI, how can you connect to variety of the data sources and ingest the data from there? Okay, so that is something possible here. So GUI, Graphics User Interface, what Synapse Analytics offers here, so you are not from development background, you don't know language. Okay, still you can do this thing. There you can use the Synapse Analytics. So working with Synapse Analytics is always simple compared to Databricks because in Databricks, everything what you have to do is uh, using code. 
Okay, so Synapse analysis gives you coldless experience. Databricks cannot give you coldless experience every time. Okay, it may not give coldless experience every time. Yeah. But otherwise, use cases are safe. Otherwise, whenever your most of the data is coming from data warehouse, prefer Synapse analytics. Okay, although data warehouse data can be ingested into data bricks also, but you know in Synapse analytics that thing works fast. Any other question? Uh, we'll request. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Sarun. Anybody has any other question? Please go ahead. Uh, Chaitanya is asking you to fill up that form, uh, which is meant for MOC activation. Okay, so uh, by six o'clock, you please uh, submit. By six o'clock, you please submit that form, or if you need more time to, uh, if you need some time to fill it up. Okay, by six o'clock, you can start filling it up. Okay. Coming back to dimension tables and fact tables. Dimension tables describe business entities like uh, products, people, places. So whenever you want to store employee list, it will be dimension table. Product list, it will be dimension table. OK, so dimension tables are kind of master tables. These tables change slow. OK, but these tables are essential to get more information in the reports. Dimension table contains attributes which change very rarely, infrequently. A date dimension table is most consistent table which contains a key column that acts as a unique identifier and descriptive columns. So dimension tables are kind of the master tables. They change uh, rarely. OK, and whenever you do every uh, sorry uh, transactions every day, now additional parameters, uh, support of additional parameters to these transactions are offered by dimension tables. Transactions will not go in dimension table, but to the transaction, additional information will be supported by dimension table. Every day employee register himself when he enters in the room uh, and enters in the company and then uh, exit also. So his entry time and exit time are to be maintained. So these are transactional. This is transactional data. Entry time and exit time will not go in the dimension table, but list of the employees. OK, in case if there are 100 employees working in the company and the list of all those 100 employees, that will go into dimension table. Everyday transactions will go into something called as a fact table. In fact table, everyday transaction, every minute transaction will go here. Store observations or events and can be sales uh, orders, stock balances, exchange rates, temperatures, etc. OK, fact tables. Every transaction goes here. Now from the fact table, there will be a uh, which constraint we call it the foreign key constraint to the dimension table. So fact tables will have dimension, sorry, foreign key constraint to the dimension table. Okay, so dimension table uh, will uh, say give the details of the additional details to every transaction. For example, if it is a sales transaction. Then who is the customer? What is the billing uh, number? Bill number on which date the items are purchased? That information will go into fact table. But of which product the purchase has been done? So list of the products will go into dimension table. That is the difference between them. Fact tables grow very fast in size, so they keep changing very frequently. Fact tables keep changing very frequently. So this is called as a star schema. At the, at the mid of this star schema, you will see fact table. Every transaction will go ahead, and in fact table, you see there are multiple keys. Product key, 
is a foreign key for for dimension table product. The product name, product unit will come from dimension table product, and a specific details will come through this product key. Order date key is a foreign key for the record year in dimension table date. Reseller reseller key is a foreign key for dimension table reseller. So here you will see for every uh, dimension table, there is a foreign key in the fact table. Employee key, it is the employee dimension. Sales territory key, it is the sales territory key. So fact table is at the middle in this star schema and dimension tables are around it. Here are the dimension tables which are around it. So that is all about star schema. There is something called as a snowflake schema. We will see the difference in between star and snowflake schema also. In snowflake schema, you will see a similar thing. Your fact table is at the center, and around your fact table, there are dimension tables. So, dim dimension, salesperson dimension, store, geography, customer, product line. So there are dimension tables around uh, the fact tables. OK, now fact table is related to salesperson. It is related to dim date, related to shipping agent, related to product and related to dim customer. OK, so how many foreign keys this fact table will have? One, two, three, four, five, because there are five relations. So there will be five. Uh, a foreign key is here, but why it is not star schema? Why it is a snowflake schema? That these dimension tables may also have relations with other dimension tables. Thereby, you will see that this relationship uh, structure is becoming complex. Relationship structure is really complex in snowflake schema. Now, which one is better? Whether star schema is better or whether Snowflake schema is better. So in snowflake, snowflake schema, one point I already have brought to your notice that there are multiple tables, relationship structure is complex. So your queries will become complex. Queries will have to deal with multiple joins. So queries, uh, these are being complex queries. They will take longer time also for execution. On the other hand, in star schema, okay, there are limited number of joints. Whenever you are querying uh, fact table, you know, it will may it may have to pull a uh, couple of uh, you know, columns from here, couple of columns from here, couple of columns from here. So your queries are simple here, not those much complex. So that is the benefit of star schema. Now let us see uh, shortcoming of star schema. In star schema, you cannot do uh, you know, normalization in all possible ways. We may have to go with some redundancy in dim date as here on this dim date, we may not do normalization. It will have redundancy. So for achieving the benefit of simple querying, what we are compromising is the redundancy of the data. In star schema, redundancy of the data is more. SQLs are simple, but redundancy is more. Now, wherever there is a data redundancy, there is always a threat of uh, data integrity. So in star schema, you will have to you know, take care of data integrity of your own. Because whenever there are red, uh, data replication and one data you want to change, okay, doing a change at one place may not work. You will have to change that data wherever it is. It has been replicated. Okay, that is a serious, uh, you know, issue. Okay, so star schema has plus and minus points. Whenever your table structure is simple, always prefer star schema. And for the complex systems, then you have to go with a snowflake schema. How do you create star schema table? That let me now show you.
here it is. <clears throat> See here. As uh, examination is not practical, examination is uh, MCQ based. I will not put these things to run. OK, because, you know, uh, starting the cluster takes a longer time. That's why uh, have a look at the syntax. For the examination, what are the important things that I will bring to your notice? OK, so create table. Is a command here and here is a table name. Here are the column names and I already told you these are representing in you know, a foreign keys. OK, uh, this is data warehouse, so you will not see lots of constraints here. Very few constraints are there like not null. OK. But otherwise, uh, you know, uh, in a relational database management systems, you have lots of constraints. Those constraints you don't see here. OK, so lots of columns are there. Then comes uh, with word. OK, and here. Distribution is equal to hash. So table will be created. Now what is this hash? What is this clustered column index? OK, there is one more uh, parameter comes here that is called as a partition. OK, so multiple such uh, parameters can be written here. OK, now what is distribution? Whenever you are creating a table, OK, there are three types of tables in uh, data warehouse. These are called as table types or what we call them as a sharding policies. Sharding policies. In data warehouse, there are three types of sharding policies. One is uh, hash. It needs partition key. Partition key and what benefit does it offer to you? Uh, very suitable for querying. OK, gives performance. For querying. Querying. OK. Uh, uniformly distributes the data across uh, multiple nodes in the um, data warehouse cluster uniformly distributes the data there and queries are also executed across the cluster and that's why you know uh, offers you better performance okay so these are good for querying not good for not good for uh, dml operations okay what we call it as a management data dml operations data M stands for management, I think, right? Data management operations. Operations. Good for data management operations. So whenever you want to do heavy insert, you know, hash is not good. <coughs> okay. Another sharding pattern is called as a replication. A replication. OK, here you don't have to give any key. That's why I'm leaving empty braces that I don't have to mention any key there. <coughs> OK, uh, replication. These are good for, uh, sorry, uh, hash is good for fact tables. OK, fact tables. Activities. This is good for. Uh, this is this also gives you performance for querying. Huh? Gives performance for querying. Okay. Uh, uh, not good for data management operations. Not good for DML operations. Okay. And is suitable for. Suitable for suitable for uh, dimension tables, dimension tables. OK, so normally what is done in the star uh, stars uh, schema or snowflake schema, you know, partition tables are created using hash partitioning and replication. Sorry, dimension tables are created using replication. There is one more uh, kind of table which is really suitable for DML operation that is called as a round robin. 
round robin. Okay, it also does not take any partition key. Use performance for DML operations. Use performance for DML operations. It's not good for uh, querying. Not good for querying. Okay, so whenever you want to upload the data, first of all, you always upload the data to the round robin. Okay, so whenever you want to upload the data, data uploading, data migration. Huh, okay, so there you will upload the data first of all to round robin. So from store, you will upload the data to round robin. Huh. And from round robin then, you can upload the data to if it is a factable data, you can upload it to hash okay, for fact data. And you can upload it to dimension, uh, sorry, replication, replication if it is de dim data. So that is the right process. That is the right process. Okay, so uh, these different shardings are to be used. So I am uh, doing here, uh, say, uh, uh, factable creation. That's why I have given hash here. And cells order number is a column which I am using for partition. Cells order number, this column we are using for partitioning. Now, which column to be selected for partitioning? You know, lots of material is available on the net. You can explore uh, that. Okay, what uh, column ideally should be selected for partition? Okay, but this is hash table what we are creating. Okay, now here is a dim resell, create table dim resell, and there you will see we are using distribution as a replicate. So here we are doing replication. Okay, so for all the uh, dim dimension tables, I am using replication here. Here also you will see replication. Okay, dim product is also a dimension table. There also I'm using replicate. Here it is. And for replication, there is no partition. Okay, dim geography, partition, uh, sorry, replicate. Now, I want to upload the data from CSV file. Here it is. Here it is. This is CSV file available in the public domain. Okay, and uh, I want to upload that data into uh, dim product table upload that data to the dim product table. So here is a command to do that. Copy into dim product from source with file type, file delimiter, okay, file uh, and other things uh, which are uh, you know mentioning the properties of the CSV file. So see here we are creating this is the syntax to create the table and here is the syntax to uh, write the copy command. In the examination, they may ask you questions like. They will give you empty space here and will ask you what word you will write here. They may give you choice as a you know, distribution, partitioning and other choices. OK, but. For replicate, OK, it is distribution for hash. It is distribution. So such missing places they may show you. OK, uh, also here you will observe. This is hash table. In hash table, what is important is the partition table name that you are writing here must be there in the projection. It must be there in the projection. That is mandatory. You cannot have partition uh, key which you are not mentioning in the select query. Partitioning key must be mentioned in the select query. There also, you know, they uh, may put a question to you. OK. Uh, uh, out of the three. Keys here, they may show you. Uh, currency key and they may show you some key which is not at all written here, which key you will write here. So the key that is existing that you already have mentioned in your projection, that key you will have to write. here. So that is uh, how the questions may be asked in the examination. In the copy uh, command also, you know, this 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 place they may leave, leave blank. 
this place. They may leave blank. And they will ask you to fill up the place. Now, looking at the file, it is pretty clear this is CSV file. So, Parkway, Avro like options will be wrong here. You will have to select CSV option. So, such type of questions are asked in the examination. Okay, here you will see the select query after schema. Star schema has been designed. Here you will see select query. And in the select query, you are doing inner joins with a table. Inner joins with a table. Okay, so that is what is needed in case of star schema. So this is one query which is representing star schema. I think it's a, it is a uh, Say I already have discussed, uh, you know, comparison between star and uh, this uh, schema. I also have discussed uh, sharding pattern. Uh, all the three sharding patterns I already have discussed with you. And there now it is a time for us to take a break. OK, it's a. 10 minutes break. Uh, post 10 minutes, we will uh, uh, resume our session with a code free transformation. So Chaitali, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm there. Uh, over to you, Chaitali. Yeah, yeah, sure. I will take it. OK, so I have uh, shared the MOC code with all those who have submitted the MOC activation form. Please check your inboxes. The code has been sent with you. Also, those who have yet to submit the MOC activation form, link is there in the chat box. Do submit it so we can share the MOC code with you on your email IDs. I repeat, those who have yet to submit the MOC activation form, do submit it so we can share the MOC code with you on your email IDs. The form has been shared in the chat box.
welcome back all hope by now all have submitted the moc activation form to receive the free study material for dp203 i hope all have submitted also for more updates regarding the upcoming session and webinar do follow our linkedin page the link for that has been posted in the chat box also the recording will be uploaded in of the session on our youtube channel so do subscribe to the youtube channel too so you you can get the recording of this session thank you thanks sure so welcome all let us resume the session okay i think uh, attendees uh, uh, chetali Shall yes, we wait sir. for, or shall we wait for a minute or so? No, sir. You can go ahead with the session. Okay. So I am sharing my screen again. Just more points about uh, uh, the dedicated SQL pool. Okay, for running these commands. In order to execute these commands, what I have to do is to create the cluster as a dedicated SQL pool first. So from here, I can create a dedicated SQL pool plus new. OK, here I will fill up the details and when my dedicated SQL pool will be completely provisioned. OK, in the notebook here, from here, I have to select the name of the dedicated. Its name starts appearing here. I have to select it. OK, that will be the name of the dedicated SQL pool and name of the database. They are always the same. OK, so uh, uh, dedicated SQL pool name and the database name, uh, they are same, so that are to be selected here. These queries I cannot run on uh, serverless SQL pool. There is a different way to run the queries here. OK, on the serverless SQL, SQL pool. So here you can see uh, how do we run the queries on the serverless SQL pool? So in serverless SQL pool, I already have made the statement that serverless SQL pool does not have storage. It has to rely on other storages. OK, so maybe. It has to rely on this uh, storage account, so this is a storage account. DP203 SYN ADL is a storage account. OK, so first of all, I am declaring that storage account as an external data source and then. Uh, on that external data source, it can be storage account, it can be ADL, whatever it be. OK, uh, I am asking it to read the file. Uh, format is with CSV and show me first in records. OK, so such type of queries can be given. Uh, on the data which is in different storage, but here I am running SQL query. So one more point would like to bring to your notice that it's a, your CSV file and on the CSV file here you are asking it to read the data through SQL query. Observe here also. OK, this is a select query on the data. Select query on the data and here I am giving the projection. OK, such queries can be equipped with where clause also. So one point everybody has to note that CSV files, which are otherwise cannot be queried, you know, as a serverless SQL pool can be used to query the, such a CSV files. There is one technology called as a polybase. Polybase. So polybase basically is a kind of a wrapper of SQL around non queryable uh, data formats like parkway csv xml json so polybase is a wrapper of sql around such files and polybase uh, is supported by serverless sql pool so such queries which are using polybase down the line okay uh, pulling the data from the uh, different formats and presenting that data through the SQL query, there is a use of the polybase. OK, so down the line, these queries are using polybase. 
Okay. <clears throat> Let me just quickly check one more concept I want to explain to you. Oh, okay. Yes, that concept is also here. Uh, see, factables can be updated. No, sorry, uh, dimension tables can be updated with a different policies. These policies are called as slowly changing dimension. In short, we call it SCD. SCD. There are different policies here. Type 1, type 2, here is a type 2, then comes a type 3, type 6. These are different policies here, and these policies are important in the sense that in examination I have seen say around two questions are asked on this. So let me quickly cover uh, SCDs also. SCD for type 1, it reflects the latest values when changes in source data are detected. Whenever you want to change some data, for example, if it is a customer uh, customer's list and we simply want to change the customer email or customer phone number there. We are not interested in his old email ID or old customer. Uh, old mobile number. So new mobile number we will overwrite in that record. Directly we will search the record. Here is a record having some old data. OK, this record was inserted on this date and was modified on this date. OK, so. We want to change this data, so what we will do. We will go to the same record and we will overwrite value in that field. Insertion might have been uh, might have been done a uh, few days ago. But modification in that record has been done. So date of modification. OK, and actual new value is to be mentioned there. So whenever we are not interested in old data, because here see we have lost old data. What was old data? We are not pretty sure. When was that data updated? That also that value also we are not mentioning. We are not uh, keeping a track of every old change that is type. So whenever we are not interested in old data, we can go with this type of policy for columns that store supplementary values like email address, phone number of a customer. You know which uh, we, we are interested in the new value and not at all interested in old value. OK, there we can go with a type one. And normal update command works here. <clears throat> normal update command works here. So update. Uh, set. Company name equal to new value where customer ID is equal to three. That kind of update command works here. But not for all the values of this strategy works. Sometimes we may want to. Keep a track of every old value also. So there comes type 2. It supports versioning of the column values, versioning of the column values. So what we are doing, try to see here. Here is one record. It's of Suzanne. OK, uh, and here is one value. OK, perhaps Suzanne is a sales uh, woman. Uh, display uh, sorry deployed in this region for this period. So she is there as a saleswoman. Today also this is this, uh, say uh, uh, today's date is uh, you know uh, 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 may not be uh, so post this date. It may be 21, 22, 23 and she is uh, uh, deployed in this region. OK, so for today this report, uh, this record is correct. So yes, her region is true as on today. 
and she is still a salesman, a saleswoman there. So this value is not expired today. Expiration date will come here, but as it, that that value is not expired, you know here infinite date has been mentioned. <clears throat> but tomorrow when we want to change her region, we will not do change in the existing record. We will insert a new record. So here is a new record inserted. OK, and in the new record, we are writing a new value. And see here, what about old record? That old record, this this value will expire uh, today or yesterday. So that that date of expiration has been written and now that value is not a current. This record is now the current. Today, from today onwards, her region of work is the southeast. OK, so from today onward, her uh, region will start and it will go infinite until it is changed. So this is the current record. So in type two, new record is to be inserted. In type two, for every value, when that value comes into uh, uh, action, and what is the expiration date of that action? Those two columns come additionally, start date and end date. These two columns come additionally. Whether that value is uh, active as on today, yes or no, so false or true, that also will appear there. Okay, but now here one more thing you try to understand, which is extremely important thing. That the same record we are going to repeat, so we cannot have a source ID as a primary key. We cannot have source ID as a primary key. So just to have unique identity to every record, we have to have one surrogate key there. This surrogate key basically is for the purpose to provide unique identification to every record because the so-called uh, unique uh, identity for the record is now getting duplicated. It was a source ID which was which is now getting duplicated. So we cannot have source ID as a primary key now. So we have to have sales ID as a primary key. So that is again very important point to be noted here. OK, so if you compare type one and type type two, you will see. Uh, your primary key cannot be a primary key in type two. OK, you have to have a surrogate key in type two in type one. OK, it's a primary key because your uh, records are not getting replicated. OK, that is one thing. Second thing in uh, type one, you have modified date. And in type two, you have start date and end date, which is representing tenure or duration. OK, for your data. For your specific data for how much duration that data was, uh, uh, you know, active and uh, after which date that data became inactive and which new data uh, came into uh, activity. OK, so start date and end date are representing tenure or duration of active uh, 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 date, uh, ac active data. So that is the difference in between type one and type two. Let us see type three. <coughs> Support storing two versions of dimension members as a separate column. So here you will observe. Current mail and original mail. These are the two columns. So original mail is a previous mail of that customer and current mail is representing new mail ID of that customer. So original mail ID is in a separate column and for representing current current mail, there is a separate column. So here we are not inserting new record, but we have added a new column there. Additional column there. So new data whenever is being maintained in the column wise, then it is type three. And whenever new data is being maintained row wise, that is type one. And whenever new data is being maintained as a new row, that is type two. Th these are the differences between, uh, among these three policies. Let me check with everybody. Is it understood? Let me know, please. 
this is important because somehow a question definitely is asked on SCD. Huh? <clears throat> you can raise your hands if it is understood. Or you can put your question. If you want me to explore, uh, explain it further. Type two in type two. Here is a type two. In type two, I want to maintain old data as well as new data. In type two, this Suzanne has this region allotted earlier in this period. OK, but I want her old data to be retained and also the new data to be written. Let me tell you the reason. Let me give you the reason. I want to maintain uh, share. Uh, share value of a company. Till yesterday it was a different share value. Today shares have been changed, so I want a new share value to be maintained under today's date. I want yesterday share value also to be maintained. OK, if we want to you know, uh, sell the uh, share. Uh, uh, for yesterday, OK, so we will have to use yesterday's rate there. If we want to sell it with a today's uh, date, we will have to use today's date. Similarly for gold prices. If we want to sell it yesterday. OK, it will be with yesterday price. If we want to sell it today, it will be with a today's price. And if I want to buy end of the month, if I want to change check which uh, how much gold was sell, sold uh, with his price means uh, yesterday's price, how much gold gold is sell, sold with the today's price. That's what if we want to calculate, I need yesterday's price also. So what was yesterday's price or uh, a specific price in the given duration? What is today's price and how much uh, for how much period that price is effective? OK, that is all type two. That is all type two. Have I explained this thing to you? Share prices, gold prices, you know, bank uh, 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 interest rates. In order to you know preserve such type of data, you know we need type two. So I made this point clear. Let me know. Okay. Anybody else has any other question? Please go ahead. Correct. <coughs> OK, how the queries are executed uh, in the uh, 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 say in your SQL engine. Dedicated SQL pool. OK, so here uh, you see there is something called as a control node. It assigns one cluster out of which one node is called as a control node. OK, and other nodes are called as a compute nodes. OK, now whenever you submit the query, that query is always submitted to the control node. Whole query control node gets control node will compile that query, will disintegrate that query into maybe one query gets disintegrated into 100 steps. Say. Then what this control node will do? Control node will submit all those 100 steps to every compute node here. First compute node will receive 100 steps. Second compute node will receive 100 steps. So every compute node will receive 100 steps. So what is to be executed? Every node knows. But on which data it is to be executed? That this node are not aware. So there is a service, data management service, DMS. What this DMS does is now it distributes the data. If we have you know, 4 GB of data to process, this DMS will submit 1 GB of data to this compute node. 
another GB to this compute node, third GB to this compute node, and fourth GB to this compute node. So for every node, say for example, this is node four. This node four will have, sorry, have got 100 steps, okay, and one GB of data. So for this node, running those 100 steps on one GB of data will take less time. For this node, again, it has got one GB of data out of four GB of data, and this node has to run 100 steps on that one GB of data. So every node here, you know, will run 100 steps on a respective one GB chunk of data that node has got. And whole processing of the given query gets completed on 4 GB of data in one fourth time. In one fourth time only because every node has to just process 1 GB of data. If one node is processing 4 GB of data, it will take four, four times, uh, you know, more time. Okay, but here in this case, every node will get 1 GB of chunk only will be executed to be current. So that is how processing happens in case of Synapse Analytics. So DMS is a data management uh, uh, service which basically uh, distributes the data uniformly across the nodes. OK. Different says, uh, yes. This uh, serverless SQL pool. In the serverless SQL pool, again, the same way, query is submitted to control node, and control node then distribute that query across other nodes. Whenever one node realizes that it is finding or its, its execution is taking time, so that one node may further distribute its workload to other sets of nodes. So thereby, all these nodes, you know, do a processing, Okay, in less time in the distributed fashion. Okay, that is how your uh, SQL pool works. <clears throat> yes, now let me come to the another topic, and that another topic is how do we design a data pipeline here? My first topic is over. It is on SQL uh, uh, processing or uh, Synapse SQL. Now let me go to the another topic, and it is creating data flows and uh, data pipelines. Any question on first topic, please put. OK, first topic is Synapse SQL. There we saw two types of um, uh, engines. One engine is serverless and another is the dedicated. OK, here we saw two examples also. So this is an example of serverless and here we saw example on dedicated. In case of dedicated, we already have seen hash tables, replicate tables, and round robin tables. Hash tables and replicate tables basically are for running the queries, and round robin basically is for uploading the data. So those three sharding patterns also we have seen. Okay, uh, a replicate table gets replicated into multiple nodes. Okay, it it gets replicated into multiple nodes. It is suitable for dimension tables. So in every node. An, an, a replicate table uh, is created, okay, and data gets replicated across multiple nodes, okay. But both this combination hash and replication hash for pack table, replication is for a dimension table. This combination works very fast to create the responses for of the queries, okay, and for uploading it's a round robin. So all these things we have seen in uh, Synapse SQL, okay. I will wait for next one minute for anybody to. Uh, ask me the question. <clears throat> <clears throat> OK, so. I think uh, this topic is understood. Serverless is better or dedicated. I have brought one major difference between them. In dedicated, your data happens to be within uh, data warehouse. In serverless, your data happens to be uh, on the another storage. Your data 
on another storage can be in csv format parkway format okay to query such a data you have one and only one way is to query that data okay through serverless so whenever your data is not in rdbms format when whenever your data in csv json xml parkway avro like formats there you go with serverless serverless is also on demand and for running on demand and ad hoc queries when you don't know how much complex the query is when you don't know at any point of time how many queries will be uh, you know submitted uh, and the responses are expected quickly so whenever you are not sure about the workload whenever you are not sure about the uh, data formats okay there you go with a serverless but whenever you are sure about the data format that it is rdbms your fact tables will go into hash uh, hash tables your dimension will uh, table uh, dimension data will go into replication table so whenever you are sure about it there you go with the dedicated whenever you are sure about how much complex complex queries you will receive okay at that time so uh, whenever your workload is predefined there you go with a dedicated but whenever your workload is not predefined go with a serverless your dedicated uses um, say rdbms data it can use rdbms data okay let me show you one more code not this one This one. Here it is. Uh, see. Here you observe. Now this is really interesting code. In this code, which file we are bringing? Uh, this is all. These are the commands to be executed on dedicated pool. All these are the commands to be executed on dedicated pool. And which file are you uh, uh, accessing here? CSV. So CSV file can also be accessed in the dedicated pool. It can be accessed in the dedicated pool. A dedicated pool calls it as a external table. In external table, your actual data is not existing in dedicated pool. It is existing somewhere else. A dedicated SQL pool provides you queryable uh, wrapper around it. This is called as a polybase. So whenever you are using dedicated SQL pool, polybase is to be used explicitly. You have to use the polybase explicitly. In serverless, you can access CSV files. In serverless, you can access CSV files. OK, but polybase you do not use explicitly because here polybase is automatically automatically used internally. So both these are suitable for using uh, different data formats both these are suitable for using different data formats okay but in addition to that you know uh, different hashing uh, sorry uh, sharding patterns if you have to use then those sharding patterns you cannot use in serverless you must use them in dedicated so dedicated offers you more um, versatility sharding patterns polybase all these things are possible in dedicated only polybase is possible in serverless having said that serverless has one more benefit that whenever you do not uh, uh, you cannot predict your workload okay on demand and ad hoc workload you have received go with the uh, serverless and whenever you have predefined workload, go with the dedicated. That's the difference. So I made the difference clear. In different scenarios, you can think of using different things. OK. Any anybody else? Fine. So let us go for synapse pipeline now 
synapse pipeline now. So I'm closing all these things. Yes. Okay. Now, what is orchestration? That is very interesting to see here. See, while creating the data pipeline, I already have drawn the diagram that we pull the data from variety of the data sources. We may accumulate data at one place. On that data, we may want to apply different, uh, you know, processing steps like data cleaning, data transformation, data aggregation. One typical uh, scenario, let me uh, discuss here, that we have uh, you know, transactional data on different storages or one of the branch has kept transactional data of whole of the day, sales data of whole of the day on database. Another organization, sorry, another branch has kept it on say Cosmos DB. Cosmos DB. There is one more organization, sorry, branch, which is keeping that data into maybe uh, data lake. Data lake. So we have data on the different uh, storages. And we want to aggregate that data into one storage for applying different steps on the data. So here is one more set data source, say, capable of accommodating all the data at one place. After we accommodated and accumulated whole data here, we may want to apply different steps here, different cleaning steps. Then comes uh, transformation steps. OK, so data wrangling, data munging, data cleaning, data transformation. OK, these steps we want to apply. And in order to apply these steps, we may have written notebooks here, Spark notebook. So N1 and here is say N2. This is another notebook. OK, we want is uh, uh, say OK, after due transformation of the data, we may want it to ingest the data. Into or ingest the data to some storage. This is a queryable storage. It can be Cosmos DB or RDBMS. RDBMS, RDBMS. OK, so. Through these steps, we are making our data ready uh, for uh, querying. And after these steps, we may be uh, uh, posting the data to the queryable storage. Okay, other applications may be querying this RDBMS, RDBMS to get that data. Now, this is one pipeline which we want to run every day evening. Okay, so automatically it should run. So what we can do, we can use this uh, synapse pipeline to design uh, uh, this whole uh, all these steps. OK, so what synapse pipeline will do? It will automatically start itself by six o'clock every evening. It will, you know, order to pull the data from. Let me just uh, change the color here. These are you know, operations and orders by Synapse Pipeline. Yes. So Synapse Pipeline will order accumulation of the data into this storage. OK, so these are different data sources and this is data sync inside which this data will be accommodated. Then Synapse Pipeline will order this notebook to start its execution automatically. This notebook or this code will pull the data, will clean the data, okay, will keep that data at a place uh, from where this notebook can pull the data. 
So notebook two will apply transformation on that data, will apply aggregation on that data. And this synapse pipeline can ask uh, the aggregated data to be directed towards relational database management system. So all these steps will be started by six o'clock every day and you know uh, uh, will be completed automatically every day. This is called as an orchestration. And for this purpose, this pipeline is used. So here you can see a couple of activities. This is called as an activity. This is graphics user tool. GUI, you don't have to write any program for this. OK, you simply have to you know, get the activities dragged from here. OK, this is a way to run the Synapse notebook. OK, this is a way to read the data from variety of the data sources. So different activities are there. You even can do transformation also. Here you can apply cleaning of the data. You can apply transformations. OK, so here you can uh, apply for loop. See for loop you can apply here. You can do some uh, condition check. OK, here you can use a switch also. So multiple such operations you can apply here and all these operations without writing any code, but using graphical tool only. OK, so such activities are to be dropped and placed here, so you can just, uh, you know, uh, pick up some activity and drag here and place here. OK, and then for that activity, you can, you know, uh, define a data source here. You can define uh, data sync here. OK, here you can apply some transformations. So lots of things you can do here. And with this, what will happen is that some of the transformations, uh, uh, you know, this uh, 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 Synapse pipeline does for you. And some critical transformations, if you want to do those transformations, you can do by calling Databricks notebook here. So here is a Databricks notebook by calling Synapse notebook here. By calling HD Insight uh, arrangements here. OK, so HD Insight map reduce here. So these these notebooks can do a data cleaning, data transformation, and every uh, orchestration will be done by uh, this pipeline or this activity. So such activities you can design here. And this is one pipeline. Now the pipeline that you are looking at is basically a incremental pipeline. How this pipeline will work? Let me explain you. It is very interesting. There is one storage or there is one relational database management system inside which every day cell is inserted. Yesterday's cell got inserted. Today's cell got inserted. Tomorrow's cell will be inserted. And what this pipeline will do, though every day cell is going into that database, it will pick up a cell of the specific day only. For example, Though there are 1000 records out of which, you know, 800 records of yesterday's cell and 200 records of today's cell. It will pick up today's 200 records only, will apply transformation to it, okay, and will move those 200 records only to the uh, SQL database. It will not move all 1000 records. 800 records, it did move yesterday only, so today those records it will not move. It will move only today's records. That is called as an incremental copy. And such type of incremental copy are also possible uh, here through uh, this EDF. Uh, sorry, uh, data pipeline. OK, here you observe. This is one more way. OK, of designing data pipeline. Not it doesn't have only one activity. OK, if you double click here. OK, here you can apply micro level transformations also. We call it the data flow. So if I want to apply filtering on the data, so see here, I want to pick up only those records for whom year is greater than 1910 and year is less than 2000. Only you know, records falling in this uh, year, I want to pick up. So such type of micro level transformations I can do using data flow. Doing aggregation here. I want to do group by so here. I am doing a group by on the year. And then. 
there I will apply aggregation of average. So doing joining, doing group by, doing aggregation, all these things uh, are possible in something called as a data flow. And my aggregated data, then I want to sync into blob storage. So what I have to do is again here, multiple activities I will have to uh, say uh, drag here. Now, how do I get the activities? Let me show you. Here are the activities. That plus sign is listing all the activities. So joins are possible. Splitting is possible. Union is possible. Lookup is possible. OK, uh, schema modifications are possible. Different formatters are possible. Row modifiers are possible. Lots of transformations are available in data flow. So in uh, uh, link, sorry, in pipeline, I have limited options available here. This is a pipeline. Here I have limited options available, limited options of transformation. But in data flow, you know, there are lots of transformation operations are available. And thereby, we can you know, uh, design the pipelines. We can create a triggers over there. OK, we can assign the triggers to the pipeline. So from here, I can create the triggers. OK, and to the pipeline, we can apply uh, the triggers here. OK. Now from here, add a trigger option is available. So from here we can add a trigger to the pipeline. Whenever we add a trigger to the pipeline, okay, whatever be the time uh, we might have declared in that trigger, you know, at that time, uh, automatically that pipeline gets executed. Here now, there are a couple of, uh, you know, components. This is called as a pipeline. What is in front of you? This is called as a pipeline. OK, now uh, inside this pipeline, see this pipeline, for example, this pipeline has to bring the data. OK, so from where should it bring the data? OK, that is called as a data set. OK, so pipeline is a collection of the activities. OK. Pipeline. Pipeline. Ordered collection of activities. Ordered collection of activities. OK, its order will decide in um, say uh, how the activities will be executed. The first activity, this one is executed first. OK, now whether this one is first or this one is first because this is second. So these two activities will be concurrently executed. These are not dependent on each other. So these two activities will be concurrently executed and after completion of execution of both these activities, then it will execute this activity. So which activity it will execute concurrently, which activity is dependent on other activities, that whole care is taken by this pipeline. Pipeline takes whole care. Now what is activity? Activity is an action to be taken on the data. Action to be taken on on data. What kind of action now? So action can be uh, copy action. OK, invoke notebook action. So notebook will be executed. These are the activities. How it will get the data now for copy or even to the notebook also it will have to get the data so that it will get through something called as a data set. Data set. So data set represents actual data actual data. OK, here I am using a data set also. Let me show you data sets here. Where are the data sets? Have I deleted all of them? No, no, here they are. See, integration data set. So they are representing actual data. This data set is representing data from movie.csv file. Movie.csv file. OK, so there are multiple data sets which are representing actual data. OK, so to represent actual data, it needs a file name. File name. And needs a file name and path. It also needs format of the data. Format of the data. So whenever you submit these things, it will create a data set for you. OK, but now where is the data? 
which is storage that data has, how to connect to that storage. So for that purpose, we have to create here something called as a data source or linked surface. Linked surface. Uh, somewhere uh, EDF is calling them as the connectors also. Connectors. Connectors or linked service, they hold or it holds uh, credential details. Credential details to connect to uh, storage. Storage. So when you have to connect to uh, blob storage, then what is access key of the blob storage? What is the name of the blob storage? Which container uh, it wants to connect to within the blob storage? That information goes into link service. So link service helps it to connect to a specific storage and data set helps it to pick up actual data from that storage and populate that data and make that data available to activity. So these are different components for data pipeline. Besides this, there is another component, data flow. OK, so data pipeline. Uh, you know, uh, can have multi action activities and multiple data flows. OK, so pipeline. Pipeline is formed. Formed of sub pipeline. Sub pipeline, which is called as a data flow. Data flow. OK, and activities. Activities. So what is the significance of data flow? So it is a sub pipeline and one sub pipeline, one data flow, okay, can be used for multi, can be used in multiple pipelines also. So if you have one data flow which is doing a specific kind of kind of transformation, and that transformation you want to do within multiple pipelines, so you don't have to declare that transformation in every pipeline. You will declare it as a one data flow, and that data flow you can you know, call into multiple pipelines. So reusability. Okay, is something what this data flow offers to you. Besides that, there is something called as a trigger. Trigger is a you know event event defined. Okay, to assign to uh, pipeline. Okay, pipeline. It is time event actually. It's not other event. It is time event. Uh, uh, on the time event, the pipeline gets automatically executed. The pipeline is executed automatically. It's executed automatically. So these are the components of uh, uh, say uh, link service. Any question on link service? Please go ahead. <coughs> Any question on link service? <coughs> Yes. I will wait for one minute. Then we will go with a spark. Okay, I think there is no question from you. Hmm. Okay. The last topic from the curriculum. And thereafter, then we will have a look at questions. OK, so from here you can create a spark pool. So if I click on spark pool, OK, by default, you don't get any spark pool. From here you can create a spark pool. OK, and uh, uh, what is the purpose of the spark pool is to run the spark commands. So this is the compute that you are going to create here. To run the spark commands. So here you have to give the spark pool name. 
OK, uh, what kind of node you want to choose? So only one option memory optimized. OK, node size here you have to give. OK, small will have four cores and 32 GB. So uh, as per your workload, you have to select a specific size. OK, auto scaling. Auto scaling means automatically do you want it to increase its size? Whenever it gets the overload, OK, it can uh, distribute the uh, so it can pull in resources and can uh, you know uh, create its responses quicker. OK, that is auto scaling. OK, size of the nodes can be given from here. See, very large size is also available. 198 uh, nodes okay, we can make available here. Very large size. OK, and cost per hour is appearing here. OK, this cost, it has to increase. This cost it has to increase. See, it is increasing the cost. OK, so I am keeping it at the lowest size. So that's how we will create a spark pool here. OK, this is now I'm canceling. OK, I'm discarding the changes. It may take 10, 15 minutes, 15 minutes around you know, to get the spark pool ready. And once it gets the spark pool ready, OK, now that spark pool, that is the compute actually. You are getting a cluster there to run your spark commands. OK, and then you can write your spark commands this way. Let me close these things now. Yes, here is the way you can write your command. So this editor, what is in front of you is called as a Monaco editor. And uh, here uh, this is called as a cell. OK, within the cell, you are writing one or more than one commands within the cell. OK, so here I am writing three commands. OK, and this is the, the this is a Spark uh, API, PySpark API. Remember, Spark is available. Uh, sorry, Spark can run uh, commands from multiple language. OK, and here you will see I am writing uh, commands in the Python language, but I can mention commands uh from other languages also okay so java it doesn't allow me to write here but it is possible that in this cell i am writing a python command in the immediate next cell i may write sql command in immediate next cell i may write scala command but now the question is how does it identify with of which language this command is so whenever i am writing the scala command what I have to, how do I suggest it that this is a Scala command? So I have to mention there something called as a magic prompt. Percentage, percentage, by Spark. This is for Spark. Uh, sorry, Python. Python. Okay. Percentage, percentage Spark is for Scala. This is for. Percentage percentage SQL. Here it is. This is for giving SQL query. SQL query API. Percentage percentage R. Let me just check. No, R language is not available here. Okay, but I think C sharp is available. C sharp is available. Here they are not giving you the support of R. In Spark Engine, otherwise that support is available. But here they are not giving you that support. But C sharp is available. So percentage percentage is something called as a magic prompt, you know, which defines uh, the language for the syntax in that cell. Language for the syntax in that cell. Okay. Default language is PySpark. So whenever you are writing PySpark command, you don't have to mention anything. Uh, sorry, magic prompt. OK, so I delete as this command is PySpark. OK, but otherwise we will have to mention that magic prompt. This command, uh, this man, Monaco editor is not able to run. Monaco editor basically is to help you to write the command. And whenever you want to run it, OK, you need uh, somebody to run it. So that 
spark pool name appears here and uh, you have to attach this notebook to the spark pool then these commands are executed on the spark pool immediately you will get the output so here you see how do i see the output so this is a content of one airports.csv file this is on this uh, blob storage here i am configuring the blob storage okay and here I am asking it to read data from the blob storage. OK, this is CSV file, so CSV method I am calling. Delimited by comma. OK, uh, how do I, does it come to know the column names? So here I am declaring the schema. OK, if that CSV file doesn't have schema, I am declaring a schema here. OK, and data uh, with the schema we have to bring here. So here I will get something called as a data frame. This is the data frame. No data frame. OK, you might have heard this concept in case if you are from Python background, Pandas background, you might have heard this concept in Pandas also. So you see what exactly data frame is data frame. It is available in Pandas. Pandas. It is available in Spark. And this concept is also there in the R language. So what this concept is, let us see. So data frame basically represents data in columnar format. Every data frame represents data in columnar format. Represents, represents data in columnar format. It, it does not represent data in tabular format, row wise, no. If first column is employee ID, this data frame represents all employees IDs of 1000 records together. That is the first column. Then employee names, all employee names together, that is the second column. So that's how you know data frame is represented. So remember, whenever you see tabular uh, representation, you call it as a two dimensional array where data goes there row wise. But this is not two dimensional array. The data representation is entirely different where data representation is in columnar format. OK, that's why. Uh, we call it as a data frame. In pandas, you have the data frame, which again represents data in columnar form, but. Data gets accommodated in one node only. OK, data is not distributed. Across nodes. So the machine under which this uh, Python engine is running, you know, only in that machine, this Panda data, Panda data frame is created. Okay, in Spark, data frame is distributed across nodes. Distributed across nodes. Some data exists in node one, some data exists in node two, some data exists in node three. If node one has a capacity of one GB, so this data frame will represent 1 GB data from node 1. It will also represent 2 GB data from node 2 if node 2 has a capacity of 2 GB. And it will represent 5 GB data from node 3 if uh, you know node 3 has a capacity of 5 GB. So 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1, 8. Including with this cluster, Spark data frame can hold 8 GB of data. That's why this is for Big data, big data. Pandas data frame is not for big data because the data size is limited to the capacity of the single node. But here, you know, its its uh, storage capacity is limited to capacity of sum of capacities of all nodes. So that's why it can represent big data. This is also for single. Uh, okay, data is not distributed. There are two uh, modes actually in our language, distributed and non-distributed. So I am talking about non-distributed node across nodes. So data frame represents data in the distributed form, and I also have you know explained you difference between. Them. So that's how you will have to give the commands. Let me show you another set of commands. Hmm. Here we are reading the data. I can see that data. This is New York taxi uh, data. 
OK. Hmm. And on this data, then we have, you know, different. Uh, set, no, data cleaning operations uh, commands are there in uh, PySpark. Data transformation operation commands are there. If you want to diagrammatically uh, draw different visuals there, so that is also possible. I haven't shown. Yes, here are some visuals using Matplotlib, so that data we can see in using Matplotlib also. Okay, so spread of the data we can see here. Okay, so Python works here. PySpark can go with the Python, but whenever you are working with the Python, your data is not distributed. So Python commands, you have to take care that your Python commands will deal with a small size of data. But whenever there is a large size of data, then you have to use PySpark commands. That's how you have to do the development here. You can ingest the data from SQL database. Here is a way to ingest data from Cosmos DB. Here we are in ingesting, ingesting it from Cosmos DB. OK, we can ingest data from data warehouse from data lake. OK, by using PySpark command, you can ingest data from variety of data sources. And you simply have to learn uh, you know, Python commands for that. OK, so that's how you know, PySpark works here. OK, any any question on this on this PySpark? Let me know, please. Question on PySpark. Hello, go ahead with your questions, please. Just give me a minute. I have to switch on the light in the room. It's dark now. Huh. Yes. <clears throat> OK, if you don't have questions, uh, I think I should execute one five minutes uh, question and answer session before we go for um, looking at the type of the questions asked in the examination. Okay. So it seems nobody has any question. My first question. Now here you please note, I don't have access to your messages. You have to unmute yourself and answer this question. So please mention the answer here. Anybody can answer this question? Can anybody answer this question? I don't think it is difficult. I have got one answer. Please let me check.
A. Yes, Superkash, you are absolutely right there. OK, answer is A. I just have explained his uh, to you that whenever you write any command in the notebook, you know there uh, in which language are you writing that command has to be mentioned there with a magic prompt and answer is A. I'm going to second question now. Observe the table structure very carefully and let me know. Is it of type one, type two, type three or type six? Dim product is a slowly changing dimension of what type? Product key column is. That is also to be mentioned there. <clears throat> Even if your answer is wrong, this is not examination. OK, go ahead. What will be your answer? I have got the answer. Let me just check. Type zero. Type type zero. There is no type zero. It's a type one, type two, type three or type six. There is no type zero. That is one thing. Second thing is, OK, let me show you the answer now. Here you observe in type one. We do change into the same row. We do not insert a new row in type two. We insert a new row. But and when we insert a new row, your primary key get repeated there. That's why it cannot be a primary key. So you have to you, we need a surrogate key in type two. Here, if it is of the type one, because why it is of the type one, that also you observe row insert date time and row update date time. So it's not inserting a new row, but in the same row it is mentioning update time. So in the same row, if it is mentioning update time, okay, so it means it will not hold, it will not maintain old uh, data. That is one thing. And second thing is it doesn't need a surrogate key because it is not type two. It is type one. So this becomes product key becomes. Business uh, business key. It becomes business key. The point is. You need to work more on uh, a CD and to answer such questions. I have got some. Question again type two. Yes, type two is the answer here. Type two is the answer here. OK, I'm moving ahead. Type two is the answer here and product key is a business key. It is not surrogate key. Sorry, sorry. What? Why I'm saying why you did you answer type two? It is a type one here, no? type one, because in type one you have row insert and row update like columns. So it is type one. That is one thing and type one does not have surrogate key. That's why. You know, uh, product key is a business key. It is type one. Answer is type one. Next. This question is what are all best practices to choose partition key? And one of the partition key is sorry, one of the best practices, the key that appears in most of the where clauses. That should be selected as a partition. Key. One of the best practices to select uh, that column as a partition key, which appears in most of the where clauses in the query. OK. 
Okay, I have got one answer. Ha, yes, yes, Suprakash. Yes. Now answer this question. Anybody has any answer? I already have given you a hint of best practice and according to that hint, your correct answer is B. Has distributed and purchase key. So here you observe in the where clause, you purchase key is being used. So the question is the table contains purchases from supplies of the retail store. Pack purchase will contain the following columns. The columns are listed here. Pack purchase will have 1 million rows of data added daily and will contain three years of data. So here in the problem statement, uh, not everything that is mentioned may be relevant to get the answer. OK, so here in this case, you know, uh, this uh, that there will be 1 million rows of data you know, that is irrelevant. Transact SQL query similar to the following query will be executed daily. OK, which table distribution will minimize query times? Ah, sorry, I told you this is not relevant, but yes, this is relevant. Now tell, let me tell you why it is relevant. One thing is every day billions of records will come. It means it is a fact table. OK, and for fact tables, we have to create or we have to use hash sharding pattern. Hash sharding pattern, that's why hash distributed. Now, option B and option D, these two are the choices. Which one to select? So there then you have to apply best practice. Best practice is of the where clause. Okay, and that's why option B is correct. That's how the questions are asked in the examination. And that's how you will arrive to the answer. Okay, let me just check any message. B, yes, correct. Answer is B. Okay. Next question. Uh, yes, has distributed on purchase key. Answer is B. Next question. Now, this question is not of data warehouse. This question is of uh, ordinary RDBMS. So, read question carefully till to the end. Okay, and then find the answer. Now, if it is not of the data warehouse, I do expect an answer from you. answer it. Read it carefully and then answer it. Yes, I repeat again. This is a question of ordinary uh, a relational database a database only. Okay, let me give you one more hint. I got one answer. Let me just check. B. No, I don't agree with you. Any other answer? Rohan has answered as uh, B, C.
P or C. I would have chosen C here. And the reason is this question is based on self join. Self join. So doing a joining. Of the table with another column in the table, same table that is self join. OK, and here you will see we want to do that join on employee key. Uh, just a minute. Huh? Is it employee key or employee ID? Let me just check. You need to alter the table to meet the following requirements. Ensure that user can identify current manager of the employee support. Creating an employee reporting hierarchy of your entire company. It is employee key. OK, provide fast lookup for managers. So let me show you actual answer. Employee ID. Now for this, uh, you know, answer C also can be manager employee key. Answer C also can be correct. This question I will have to change. OK, OK, it is on self joining. So you will have to add a new column to uh, do the joining on the primary key. Primary key here is employee key. Just a minute. Huh? It is straight address. Huh? Yes, yes. Employee key. So answer A, as per me now, answer C is correct. OK, I will have to correct this answer. OK, fine. So whoever has answered C, you know, C for current one. B was a previous question. OK, OK, employee key. Huh, yes, correct. So answer C is correct here. OK, I will have to do the change here. Yes, C, employee key. This is correct. OK. Yes, next question. You have an Azure Synapse workspace named my workspace that contains a database named my test DB. Your query is create table. OK, here you're you're writing the query. OK, and then you are. Uh, creating the table and then you are running the query. Read the create table structure and then the query and tell me. Uh, whether answer is A, B or C answers are given here. It will return an error. Why? I think uh, the from column says my test db dot dbo dot this. The table name is not correct, and I think dbo should come first, and then the table name. Oh yes, you are correct. That is one reason, and another reason is also there. See, uh, in the where clause, the name column name is being used, but actually there is no name column in the. Table. So that is also yes, another yes. reason. Column name is incorrect. Right. right. Ah. So observe column name is wrong. Table name is also wrong. OK, so answer is B. So you are absolutely right. OK, I'm going to the. Let me just check anybody else has given that answer. Uh, yes, it is B and I think a B is error. Yes, you are correct. Next question.
I have got one answer. Let me just check. It is E. File 2 and file 3 CSV, file 2 and file 3. I don't agree with A. Another answer, please. See, you have to mention wild card. Wild characters you have to mention, like star or double star. OK, uh, this is the folder. Whenever you mention the folder, what it does is it picks up the files inside the folder, so it will pick up file one and file four. It will not pick up files from the subfolders. If you want it to pick up files from the subfolders, here you will have to mention asterisk asterisk. Double asterisks. So double asterisks will make it to the recursively look into every folder to pick up the file. If you don't mention double asterisks, means it will pick up those files which are immediately within that folder. If you mention single asterisks, okay, it will uh, pick up the files which are immediate, but with that single asterisks, you know, pattern you can give. And whenever you are mentioning double asterisks, you are asking it to recursively look into the folder structure. OK, so here answer is file one and file four. Answer is B. So here I am showing you the answer. Subfolders are recursively traversed only if specified as a slash star star. So its answer is B. OK, next question. Which file format would you use for each type of output to answer? Uh, you need to output files from Azure Data Factory for columnar format. OK, tell me which data representation here stores a file in columnar format, stores a data in columnar format. OK, I know this point hasn't come in our discussion. OK, but in case if somebody of us is aware. Remember here, Avro, GZIP, PXT, they store data in row format. Only Parkway is a columnar format. So answer for the first is Parkway. JSON with a timestamp, it is Avro format. In Avro, data goes in the binary format, but metadata goes in the JSON format. So JSON with a timestamp, that is the metadata. OK, so it's the uh, answer for the second is Avro. OK, in GZIP, everything is encrypted OK, and is stored as it is. The way you gave it, you know, in that way, the data is stored there. In Parkway, data is stored in text format, sorry, in uh, um, columnar format and in TXT, TXT, data is stored a row wise in the text format. So answer here is Avro. Answer. Columnar format parkway, JSON with timestamp, it is Avro. I'm going to the next question now. In case if you want me to put in a more explanation, please let me know. Yes. Now this is interesting question and I hope everybody should be able to answer it.
Yes. This is not difficult actually. Dim customer. Whether it will be hash distributed, round robin or replicated. It is dimension table. OK, what uh, sharding pattern I explained to you for dimension tables. Just to select that one. For a dimension table, I told you replicated. Dimension employee replicated. Dimension time replicated. Fact has distributed. The answer. Hello. Any question? Next question. Now this question is on storage account. I already have explained to you hot pool and archive. So this question is based on that. Anybody please? Even if it is wrong, don't worry about it. No? Just apply your guess. Now in the examination also, not uh, you know all the questions you may be confident while answering. OK, but you know you have to apply some logic and uh, guess. So just to see whether you can apply proper logic or not. Okay, let me show the answers now. Five years old, it is a cold storage. Seven years old, it is the archive storage. Okay. So that's all uh, from my side. Chaitali, are you there? Chaitali? Anybody has any question, please go ahead. Otherwise, I think uh, it's a time for us to conclude the session. Chaitali? Yes, sir. Uh, Chaitali, I am done with uh, the coverage. OK. OK. And uh, uh, I am just asking them whether they have any questions. So I think I should wait for their uh, any question from them for next two minutes. Yeah, sure, sir. Anyone Thanks, any question Amar. you can ask in the chat box. Yeah. 
or you can unmute yourself and ask so sir can answer to that any questions also i am sharing the feedback form in the chat box do share your feedback on the session Okay, so see, I have tried to uh, cover as many topics as I can in available time. I also try to give you, uh, you know, insight of how you can appear for the examination. Okay, I try to give you some specimen questions also. Okay, to give you, you know, more understanding of what type of questions are asked. Okay, so that's all from my side. Best wishes to you. Uh, from my uh, from me and uh, Chaitali and uh, from the company Synergetics India. OK, so that's all from my side. Uh, please uh, fill up the feedback. Feedback is extremely important for us. OK, so don't uh, you know uh, miss uh, filling up the feedback. So thanks all from my side and over to Chaitali. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, shall I drop Chaitali now? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Thank you. Guys, before leaving the session, do fill out the feedback form. I have shared the feedback form link in the chat box. 